When we last met in Geneva at the end of 2018, no one could have predicted the events that lay ahead of us. Just like the rest of society, parliaments and parliamentarians have experienced an unprecedented upheaval. Parliaments have had to adopt new and previously untested digital solutions. Through the pandemic, parliaments have learned to become more agile and more responsive to their users' needs. Members can spend more time away from parliament but still be active, and the public have more opportunities to get involved. Taking the opportunity to re-look at the operating model of parliament and therefore modernising parliament's back office and operations through workflows and automation and making it more resilient, effective and efficient. You can see that the members have enjoyed being in their constituencies, conducting their campaigns, while attending parliamentary sessions. It was mentioned that civic knowledge was identified as a barrier to get people more engaged in, uh, in uh, the world e-parliament report. And um, during this session, trust in institutions was identified as a key factor to work on to have citizen engagement. Through this process, digital tools have become even more mission critical. And it's important to ensure that user needs are met and to listen closely to what users want. The South African Parliament has benefited greatly from the engagement as well as the participation in the SIP hubs. So our Parliament is a member of the South African Regional Hub. We're also a member of the G1 Open Data Hub. This has been since 2019. And recently we've added some members to the ICT Governance Hub to make sure that I'm part of CIP and part of the hub, coordinating the hub, the, the activities of the hub. And that has been quite good for us. It's been quite, it, it's, it's, it's been very helpful actually, because we're able to see what is happening, what is trending across the world within parliament and be able to pick what we could pick and customize it to our own environment. And we are doing just that. Uh, but this is a unique place to, to connect parliaments, to connect uh, countries and a place to, to meet all the colleagues so that we can share uh, our knowledge on our domain. So that's really a unique place to exchange information. We've got a lot of priorities. That's always the problem. <laughs> what should you focus on? But I, I would say the, the number one priority is that we don't regress any of the new capabilities that we've been bringing in over the last 18 months. So um, we've made a big investment in Parliament to um, raise the, um, the bar in terms of our data capability, you know, and skilling, and skilling people, the investment in people and really, you know, giving them the, 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 the capabilities that they need. Um, and we can't afford to let that regress. There in a large amount of valuable knowledge was shared um, that assisted Parliament to be effective in continuing with the business of parliament. About 80-90% of today's operations into the future. Because basically that's what we're talking about. We want the parliaments that are driven by the digital platforms. But you've got a sense that you are not alone in this. And I think the this is what the, the conference has done as well. It's been very practical. It's been insightful, it's been uh, an amazing way of learning and it's also been a, an amazing way for contributing as well. The World e Parliament Conference is a chance for members, parliamentary staff and experts to meet together and share the latest ideas around Parliament, modernisation and the role of digital tools in the legislative process and for public engagement. As the first opportunity to stop and take stock since the pandemic hit, this is a unique event collecting together a wealth of experience and ideas.